National Museum of African American History and Culture's Joyful Fridays program. My name is Arielle, and I'm going to be learning and creating with you today, along with my teammate, Tammy. Hi, friends. I'm so thrilled to have you all here with us today for our Joyful Friday as we explore J is for Jess. We are so excited to have so many people joining us today. Thank you for being here. During our program today, we are going to be reading a page from our Joyful ABCs book. Tammy's going to show us our book. There it is. Yep. All right. And we're going to look at museum objects together and we're going to create some art. Every week we are exploring one of the many things that make you, you and all of the amazing things that you can do. Looks like we're all ready. If you can give me two thumbs up to let me know you're ready. I'm ready. Arielle, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So people like you all out there and me can have so many different ways to be. Today, we are learning about one of those ways that we can feel and be, and it starts with the letter J. What words do you know that start with J? Can you write some of them with us in the chat? Our first word being shared is justice and just, and justice and jumping and just. I think some friends might know what our theme is today. <laughs> Any Joy. other words? Joy. See, we John. have some names. Mm -hmm. Joke and just juice. Jingle. Ooh. We have jumble and juicy and jelly and jam. Jiggle. Jack. June. Job. Tammy, what words do you know that start with J? Um, the word that I, or words that I'm thinking of, I'm thinking for J is for juggle and J is for January. Hmm. So one is an action word with J and one is the name of a month. I was thinking of a couple words. I was thinking of J could be for jelly bean or J could be for jumbo, which is just another word for uh big right <laughs> some people thought of some other j months july yeah. is one or june jill jumanji whoa job jambalaya boo, boo, boo. all right we also know that joyful fridays starts with a j right and jar and jolly and someone said justices which is a judge kind of like our Supreme Court justices, right? Well, the word we are going to be learning about today, some friends have already guessed it, is just. J is for just. Let's read a page from our book together to find out more about this special word. J is for just. Have you ever had a disagreement on the playground or when playing a game? If you listen to everybody's point of view and treat others fairly, that means you are just. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what J is for just means for our program today. So when a person is just, that means that they are making choices that are fair. So being just is kind of another word for being fair. When something isn't fair, we call it unjust. And there are a lot of ways to be fair or to make just choices. But if I could describe it to you in one way, I would say that if you want to be just or fair, it's important that you listen to everyone's experiences and feelings and then figure out how everyone can get what they need or figure out what's the best option for everybody. So I would think about what can you do to make sure everyone around you is heard and feels safe and is happy and healthy. It's not always easy, but it is possible. You can be just in a small space 
like your home or your classroom. So being fair, maybe sharing a toy or making sure that everyone has a work partner at school during a project. You could be just in your community. You could tell leaders how they could treat all of the citizens in your community better. Um, adults can vote for laws that will make sure that people are being treated fairly. On our book page today, we can see that there is one child who's sharing a toy with another child. And that's being fair because they're making sure that they aren't the only one that gets to have fun with that ball. They want the fun to be shared with other people on the playground. The thing about being just or fair is that people can have a lot of different ideas about what being fair or just looks like. And sometimes we don't all agree. Sometimes what I think is going to be fair or just for me may not be what's most fair or just for someone else. So I have to think about that. And it's really important for us to find some kind of way to share our ideas and talk about what we think is just. So when we talk about what's just or make things that show what is just, we can teach about what we think is important, what we want to see change, or what we can all do to make the world more fair for everyone. And sometimes people need reminders. They need reminders about what is just, and they might have either forgotten or they may not realize that they're not being very just or fair. So they might need to be taught what fairness is to people that are different than them. Today, we're going to talk about one way that you can remind or teach others about what you think is just or fair. I'm going to show you some things from our museum. Ready? These are button pins. You can also just call them buttons. And button pins are small pictures and words that people can put on their clothing or bags or any kind of fabric, really. On the back, they have a pin or a clip that you can use to attach the picture or the message to you. I have one really small button with me today, if you want to see this one right here. This one has a picture of my museum, and it says that I was there on the day that our museum opened. And on the back there, it has a little bit of a pin that I could use to attach to my clothes. But you have to be, you have to be very careful with that. Now... Have you seen something like that before? Do you have any buttons at your house? Some people might have buttons for different kinds of things. There's, there's buttons for all kinds of things. Like sometimes you can just use them for stuff like you might want to just show who your favorite sports team is or something that you really like to do or maybe an organization or club that you belong to. Um, but you can also use buttons to tell others what you believe is just or unjust. And these are the kinds of buttons that we're looking at today. They can show what matters to you. And even though the buttons are usually pretty small, they can make a big difference in making the world a better place. So let's look really closely at these buttons and tell us in the chat or talk with someone who's with you today and think about what do you notice about these pins? What do you see? What colors, what letters, what words or pictures do you notice on these buttons? There's a lot of different details to look at. While we wait for our friends to share with us, Tammy, can you tell me something that you notice about these buttons? One thing that I noticed about the buttons, like in the middle, they're some of them have pictures. And what really stood out to me is that two of them have animals on it. I see one that has a black panther and one that looks like a bird or maybe an eagle. Mm -hmm. I noticed those things too. Someone is noticing that there are hands on one of our buttons. Someone thinks that our, these buttons are showing pride. Mm -hmm. Someone sees a tiger on one of the buttons. Someone notices the color. Someone sees Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. I see Martin Luther King too. The continent of Africa, the shape is on there today. Someone sees the colors red and orange and yellow. Someone else notices the word vote. I see that one too. I see that one. Someone, Someone sees, sees the 
maybe there, there's a bald eagle on there. Someone else notices Africa. Put their letters on here. Mm -hmm. Several buttons encourage action. Someone else notices some green on one of the buttons. I wanted to share something I noticed about these buttons. If we look, we can see that some of the buttons, like what Tammy and some of our other friends have pointed out, is that there's a picture right in the middle of the button. At least there are six buttons here, and at least five of them have a picture right in the middle. And I wonder if that can always tell us just a little bit more about what the button is all about. But... Also, they have words that go all the way around the edges. So can everyone do that with their finger? Just writing words all around the edges. And you can do one that's just really small because buttons are really small. So sometimes we can look at the picture and get an idea of what the pin is about. Do you see that pin with the face on it? Someone else noticed that that was Martin Luther King and I wonder what it means if his face is on the button. Hmm. I know someone else noticed that there was a pin with a lot of hands and fists on it. What do you think that one could mean? All of those fists are different colors. So after we see the pictures, we can look at the words to learn even more about what the person who has it thinks is just or fair or what they believe in. The pin with Martin Luther King on it says, I am for King's way. What could that mean if they say I'm for King's way? I wonder if that button is saying that the person wearing it also believes in Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream of the world being fair for all kinds of people and they wanna see that happen in the world too. What about the pin with the different color hands on them? One of the words, there's a lot of words on that one. One of the words on that pin says unite. And unite is another word for together. So I think that that could mean that maybe the person with this pin, this button, thinks it's important that all different kinds of people of all different kinds of skin colors work together to change something. Since we're thinking about hands right now, I wanna show you some more pins. And when I show them to you, I want you to look really closely to see if you can spot any more buttons that have hands on them. You ready to look closely? All right, looking at the next object from our museum. This one, now it's a little bit hard. There's a lot of buttons on this person's vest. And actually, how many buttons can you count? Let's count them out. There's a lot on here. So you can point with your finger on your screen or just in the air. I'm gonna try and point two, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 buttons on this vest. I wonder if there's even some on the back. Hmm. I think that this person has a lot of buttons. I know whose vest this is. Joan Trumpower Mulholland had a lot to say. She is a civil rights activist who wore this vest covered in pins to show people wherever she went that she believed that people of all skin colors should be treated fairly. Each pin is different and each says something important. So do you see any pins that have hands on them? I'll point them out. So there are four different ones. We're looking at three of them today. There's a few different ones that have two hands holding each other or shaking. Can you hold your hands like this? Maybe you can shake hands with someone next to you. Hmm. What do you think that her having 
those kinds of buttons on her vest means. How do you think that seeing those hands being together like this could be a message about being just? I think that by having two hands shaking like that and one hand being a black hand and one hand being a white hand is supposed to show that Joan believes that black people and white people and people of all different colors should work together and communicate peacefully and treat each other fairly. Some other people were noticing that maybe that means that peace and friendship. I agree. I think that when you're holding hands or shaking hands with someone, that's definitely a way to offer friendship. If you want to take a closer look at buttons from our museum, you can check out our activism learning lab collection. I think Moss is going to be sharing that link with you all in the chat. And before we start our project for today, I want to ask you just one more question about our special word. How have you stood up for justice? How have you been just? What do you do when something isn't fair? When did something maybe unfair happen in your life and how did it get fixed? Did you do something about it? Please share with us in the chat just a little bit of a story or you can talk with someone who's with you today about a time that you showed you were just or that you made sure that a situation became more just. Tammy, while our friends are thinking about that, can you share with us a story or a time that you stood up for justice? I can. Um, the most recent time that I stood up for justice wasn't too long ago and I had to get pretty brave. I was in the grocery store one day shopping for groceries and I noticed that there was a person that was asking for help from a person that worked at the grocery store and that person wasn't getting help. They were being ignored. And I asked the person who was working there why they weren't responding to this person or why they were ignoring them. And they apologized and they, they helped the person out. But I suggested, you know what, maybe we should find someone else who's more helpful um, to help this person. But I just felt like if, you know, people need help, it's important that they get the help that they need no matter where they are. And I didn't, I watched the whole thing. I didn't see why that person wasn't being helped. So I tried to step in and be brave and help that person have another voice behind them to support them. Something that was, that I heard you say, Tammy, is that you were, you had to be really brave. Sometimes doing the right thing or helping someone isn't something that is just easy for everybody or that you can just feel always brave about. So sometimes it takes a little bit of extra braveness inside of us to then stand up for someone else. I really um, appreciate that way that you stood up for justice. Thank you. It was a You're small welcome. way, but I'm hoping it helped that person. Yeah, every small way that we stand up for justice is important and makes a big difference. Um, I was reading in the chat that there is someone who stood up for their friend um, when someone else was being rude to her friend and they made sure that that person apologized. And that's really important that they, sometimes our friends need us to join in with them to stand up for justice. And sometimes I, I think that justice is best stood up for when it's done with somebody else. Yes, so I agree. So I see someone, someone else stood up for their sister when someone was calling them names. That's a really a common way that we can do something is that if we notice that someone's being treated badly, we make sure that it stops. We can say something to that person. We can tell someone else to help us. Some people, maybe they stand up for justice. Let's see if they're making sure that everyone's being equally treated. Someone can stand up for justice when they're playing fair and not cheating in any of the games that they're playing. You can be standing up for justice when you include everyone. And I think we have a teacher who says, I allow each voice to be heard in my classroom. Each person should have a fair chance to speak one at a time. Mm -hmm. That's been very fair. Yeah, when we give everyone a turn to share their ideas and share their opinions and their feelings, that is being just. 
you could stand up to bullies to be just. I'm thinking about a time that I stood up for justice is sometimes it can be just in our own small spaces. Like you said, Tani, in the grocery store or teachers in the classroom or with our friends, our family members. Um, and sometimes justice happens like out and about while you're out doing something else and you have to help someone that you don't even know. I was thinking about a time that I stood up for justice when I saw some police officers in my neighborhood not treating someone very fairly. And the way that I stood up for justice was I took out my phone and I recorded what I thought were not good choices that they were making. And by recording that, I was able to share it with other people so that we could talk to our government leaders and the police and tell them that we didn't like how they were treating some of our neighbors. So sometimes it happens that even our leaders can make choices that aren't very just and we have a responsibility to make sure that that changes. Now, all of the things that everyone has been sharing and thinking about, I want you to keep in your mind because it's gonna inspire what you create today during our art time, which is starting right now. It is art time. Let me go back, there we go. Thank you for sharing your story, Ariel. And, um, that you had to be very, very brave to do that. And that's not something that a lot of people can do very easily. So thank you for supporting those people that needed support and for being so brave. So today we are going to be making button pins like the ones that we have in our museum and kind of like this. This is the one that I made earlier. I'm not sure if you see it, it says, please recycle. And I have some color around it and I have the, the review symbol. So for those of you who need to make your circles, your cardboard circles, please do so now. Moss is gonna include the instructions in the chat. So you're gonna need, yeah, at least two or one or two or three. Yeah, and I made mine out of, can anyone tell what box I cut these out of? <laughs> it's one of your favorite snacks. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have cereal box and I think I had a, a piece of, I, I got a, um, some gardening supplies and it was some, a really nice size or nice thickness of cardboard. Um, but make sure when you are making your circles that your adult is helping you cut the circles out because it's very tricky trying to cut cardboard. So for those who have their cardboard board circles ready, we're going to need tape today. This is going to help attach our safety pin or our button to our clothes. You're going to need a large safety pin if you're going to use it. I'm using a safety pin today. Ariel is not. So we're, both, we're going to show you different ways to attach your pin. We're going to need our cardboard circles. And we're going to need markers or crayons or pencils. So the first thing we need to do is we need to decide what we want to put on our button pins. Um, let's see, what is something that is important to you and why? So what is something that you want to tell people about? So we saw the buttons earlier and some just had bold words and bold pictures and some just had words. So when you think about those things that are important to you, how can you represent them in a picture or an image? So does it tell people what you care about? And are you going to use just words or just pictures or both? So you can let us know in the chat what you're thinking of or what's important to you, what you care about in this world. And what do you wanna see change? Maybe what you wanna see different or what just really interests you. So I'm seeing right now, someone says they're gonna put Tubman on the 20. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Someone's gonna put my family because I love them, stand up for people. So these are all really, really important causes. I see someone wants to put a heart on theirs because it's, it means love, be nice to everyone. Do you see some more, Aria? Yep. Um, I was seeing that someone wrote that they want to put people and animals on there. And my question is, what are you going to say? What are the people and animals in your button going to tell people about being just? And if 
tell them to be kind to animals and to be kind to people because that's a way to be judged. Um, I was reading that some people are going to put a peace sign to show to not to hurt people, not to fight with people. Some people are going to say no hate. And someone else said they, they like animals. So maybe they're going to make sure that animals are being treated justly too, that they have some rights. Um, I think that more ideas are coming in, but since we have so many, we could probably get started on drawing. So just think oh. all of these. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, did we think about what we're doing? Maybe I, okay, I'll, I'll keep thinking. I'll keep okay, thinking. Yeah, I, I have an idea, but I, I'm okay, okay. inspiration from these comments. <laughs> Okay. Um, so the things that you are going to be thinking about, all these comments that you've shared, your ideas, those are the things that are going to go on your button pins. So the next step is now that we have our words we want to use, let's think about where you want to put your, where you want to put them on the button pin. Some pins we saw only had words, others had words and pictures, or maybe two pictures. Some button pins have words that were written in big, bold letters. That way people can read them from farther away. Some button pins had a stripe, like kind of like this, that separated the words. You can see that stripe. See, it's a little white, yeah. So you want to make your pen pretty bold so people can see it from far away. So let's see, this button pin, the button pins that you're gonna be making, it's kind of like wearing your voice on your clothes. So others will see it and they'll know what's important to you without even you having to say anything about it. So think of a word or picture or both that represents what you want to say. So I'm gonna think for a minute. I have one that's about the earth. I think I'm gonna make one, let's see, about, I think I like the stop bullying. I think that's really important to me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to make mine. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, decorate it, but I think that's the word I'm going to, the words I'm going to use. So, Ariel, what, do you know what you're going to put in yours? Yeah, I was going to say, I like, Tammy, you're reminding us that just a couple words can be really strong. So it doesn't have to be a whole sentence. It could just say, stop bullying. And that's mm -hmm. enough to tell people exactly what you mean. Um, I was really inspired by the hands. I really liked the idea of hands being on a button. So I started drawing some hands in different colors. Oh. And I was thinking of putting a word right here to say love. Um, and just a reminder that that we can love all different kinds of people. That's that's my first one I'm working on. So I know I, I have remember to do my word really big so that people can see it from far away, like you said. So I have Hmm. I'm wondering if I should add, I'm going to add a little bit of a border around mine. Because remember, there was a lot that had words that just were around the edges. If you want to do that, you could do that. Or I'm going to add, let me show you, I'm adding a circle around mine on the, all around the outside, like that. Oh, that really stands out. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that's just one of mine. And then I'm just going to make one more really, really quick. Has anyone else shared with us what they're putting on theirs? Probably a lot of people are just working really hard on theirs. Oh, ways to help others, our superhero theme. Ooh. It doesn't have to be perfect. You do it just the way you'd like to do it. Yep. And you get to define what perfect is. Exactly. If You're that absolutely is right. going to be a thing. Everyone should, someone wrote, everybody should be treated the same. I wonder where they're going to put those words. Are they going to have a picture that goes on it? So I was saying earlier that, you know, standing up for justice. Like you said, Ariel could be done in many different ways in small spaces and large spaces. Mm -hmm. And if if you are out there and you see something that's not fair and you don't feel brave enough to 
act on it, telling someone else about it is a form of action. So if you do something and you're just not prepared to say something, let someone else know, maybe a grown up know, that could maybe help. Because it does take a lot of bravery and sometimes practice, you know, standing up to and fighting for what you believe in. And I um, think that I have a question for everyone to think about as they're creating their art is what should you do when someone tells you that you aren't being fair or just? That's Sometimes we might think that we're doing we're making good choices and that we're being really fair, but sometimes someone else might let us know that that didn't feel fair or that that didn't feel just to them. That's and a really, really important question. Is, it's really important to listen to what they have to say and why they think that, and then to talk about it. So like Tammy said, it's always really important to talk about it um, because none of us are all right or all fair all the time. We can all learn new ways to be fair or to be just. Um, and we're always going to be learning, even if we're, when we're children, all the way until we're big grown adults. We always will be learning about what it means to be just. And like you said, I think the most important thing is to listen to what someone has to say, because you would want someone to listen to you. So I think the, the best way that we can understand each other is really through listening. Mm -hmm. So I have, that's a really good point, Ariel. Thank you for sharing that with us. I am almost done with mine. Yeah, I just, well, this is, so I wrote this since this is our word for today. Um, but it's a reminder, it's like, I am just, but maybe I will do a little note on the back that says, I am still also still learning and I'm mm -hmm. trying to be just, I'm not going to be perfectly just all the time. That's my, so now I have my two. I have one that says love and one that says I am just, since that's our word for I mean, today. It's, they're so bold. The words just pop right off your button. So um, it looks like I think most of us are still working. It's okay if you're still working, but we're going to move on to the next step. And yeah, one more, or I just want to share two more things that, or a few more things that people said just to oh, give you reminders. What they wanted to say is one person was saying that if you someone tells you that you're not being fair or just, you could say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, and you can agree. So you can find a way to agree with them. And then someone else was saying that they're making another pin, they're making two pins, and their second one is going to be that men and women should get paid the same. So that no matter what your gender is, you should be getting paid a good amount of money for the work that you do. I wish I could see all of those pins. These are all really, really important um, messages and really great ways to be just. Now, Tammy, I'm ready to figure out what to do next. But <laughs> Thank you. All right. So there are going to be two different ways to attach your buttons. Ariel is going to be just using tape to attach hers. And if you want to show yours now, I'll wait till I'm done. Ariel, it's up to you. Um, I'll just show really quickly. Okay. So I I'm using the working. Tape. Um, yep, I'm going to make, um, so I like making these kind of tape, big pieces of tape since I have a thin kind of piece of tape. So I usually just take a long strip and I kind of like wrap it around my fingers to make like a thick, thick piece. Oh. And then I tear it off and then it, it kind of comes off like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick it right on the back of my pin so it's like that and then i'm going to stick it right on my shirt <laughs> i hope you get to wear it all day and go outside and show the world your pin <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna be using a safety pin today and this requires an adult to help you because it's a very very sharp part at the end of the safety pin and i don't want anyone to get stuck with it so what you're gonna do you're going to take some tape, let's have some regular masking tape here, you're going to take a piece, you're going to attach it to your safety pin right across like this, you're going to take your button, let's see, this doesn't matter really where you put it, and you're going to 
lay it across like this. Can you see that? Yeah. You're going to lay it across. So now you can open and close your button. So now you have the back of the pin. Open and close your button and stick it anywhere you'd like on your clothes, on any okay. kind of fabric. What's that? Carefully. Yes, very, very carefully. And I wonder where friends are going to wear their safety pins. Mm -hmm. I, when I grew up, I had a lot of safety pins. I think you did too, Ariel, in your backpack. And I had some on my hat. <laughs> so someone's going to put theirs on their blue coat. So I'll put pipe cleaners on their pen, hmm. on their backpack too. Yeah, so with all of these different places that you put them, just making sure that you can show them to someone else. And if someone asks you about it, what might you say? If they don't ask you about it, maybe you can just, they, it, maybe it'll at least just get them thinking about it, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's it. And I think, oh, someone says my jean jacket. That's a great idea. Just like Joan wore her pins in her jean jacket. I think that's a cool way to wear your pins, a really fun way to wear your pins. I wish I could see all of these pins. Someone's putting it on their brother's stroller. That's a good one. That's going to get go a lot of different places. People mm -hmm. will see that one. And I think that whether you are showing it outside on a walk or on your stroller or your backpack or your shirt like ours, um, we also would love to see it on social media as always. So please feel free to take a picture of your pins um, with you wearing them or just of your pins and share your finished projects on social media with us by using the hashtag, hashtag Namak Kids, <laughs> um, or tagging the National Museum of African American History and Culture. <laughs> So uh, before I before I say goodbye, I just wanted to show you my finished pin. Yay! Oh, I love it. <laughs> Stop fully. I think that is. I mean, it's just really, really bold, Tammy. And you I know what I did? I didn't mention that before. I actually took construction paper and cut it. So you, ha it's green. I took a circle and just kind of glued it on top. So there are different ways to decorate your pin. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us this week and we hope you enjoyed spending time with us and learning about the many ways we can be. I hope you continue to explore topics that interest you and use your voice and actions to be the change that you want to see. Just a reminder that we will not be having Joyful Fridays programming next Friday. We will return back together again on April 9th and our theme will be K is for kind and we really, really hope to see you then. In the meantime, we hope that you find joy in many ways to create, discover, and explore. Until next time, bye. bye.